and that's according to the director general as we all know uh nagrat nat and of course cct have declared a strike starting today uh for all public teachers and so starting from kindergarten all the way to the senior high schools the teachers have been asked to lay down their tools not go to the classrooms until some legacy areas have been paid and these areas are from back in 2012 according to them but gs also has stated that there are some anomalies and we'll talk at length about that as well and also on the daily graphic magazine shooting police pick up five and 2019 best farmer intent to invest in prize money in farms which is great to know let's go to the ghanaian times where it says ghana poised to generate revenue from gas power, according to the president, two policemen detained for allegedly killing man, uh, 22 years old, and president leaves for Kenya to attend ACP group summit. And at the bottom, we have BNI director, one other shot dead at installation of Queen Mother at Mankesim. Daily Guide also is talking about the BNI officer and the student who have been killed um, at Mankesim. Baumia also energizes youth and says he's addressed. This is a picture of him addressing the NPP youth at a rally in Tamale. And President opens car partnership gas valve. And now to the finder, let's eat what we grow uh, to motivate farmers and support the development of the local food industry. This is according to the president after we celebrated National Farmers Day on Friday. Now, government on course to secure parliamentary approval for 15.6 uh, billion Ghana cities bailout, according to Information Minister Opon Kuma. And MPP Youth pledged to deliver victory in 2020 business and financial times procurement scandal hits the ministry of health asap urges government to suspend tema lng project and ghana export imports bank uh, pushes for local rice patronage and that's top of the list and i hope that you are buying some ghana rice uh, for christmas publisher also says four killed in shooting spree at central region two cops caged mother abundance twins at children's hospital and ian nancy libraries anna mame dokno and um okay let me take the final one before i start my conversation so gold street business says ghana's fourth oil field nearest development stage tuc advocates date change in executing three-tier pension scheme and ghana japan bilateral relations deepen and so in the studios joining me today I have the honors of introducing right next to me, Mr. Godwin Eduji Kujo Tamla Klo. He is a legal practitioner and also a member of the NDC communications team. Always looking dapper. Good morning. How are you? Thank you. Thank good you morning. for joining and me. Good morning to, to Honorable. Yeah. Yes. And I also have Honorable Dr. Henry Kwabna Kofu Esquire. He is a former MP for Bantama and Deputy CEO of Ghana Integrated Iron and Steel Development Corporation and a member of the NPP National Communications Committee. Thank you for joining me as well. Thank you. How was your weekend? <coughs> <clears throat> um, let me say good morning to yeah. my colleague, <laughs> Council, and to your good self. Yes. Uh, I'm pleased to be on your show. Thank you very morning. much. Thank you. Yes, uh, I cherish viewers as you show, um, leaders of our nation, the president mm. and all other former presidents and all that. And let yeah. me say quickly, uh, yeah. yesterday was 81, 81st birthday of uh, former president J.A.K. Yes. Yeah, J.A.K. Four. And uh, it was so um, interesting mm. uh, being there. Yeah. You see the old man uh, in a complete um, uh, nation father yeah. mood. Yeah. Uh, very healthy, healthy, and everybody was there, including yes. the president of the land. So good morning again, and uh, we wish him... A belated uh, happy birthday. Yes, another year has come along with him. Um, the weekend wasn't too bad. I uh, had the opportunity of um, being on uh, an occasion that I learned so much. Okay. Aliza Hotel, uh, Professor Adujemfi, mm. and Mrs. Dr. Uh, Adujemfi yeah. uh, Mokoa. Okay. Yes, um, 50th uh, marriage anniversary. Oh, Golden. that's lovely. It was, it was so oh. lovely, Jubilee. Yes. 50 years, wow. It was so lovely. Can you yes, Aliza, and uh, it happened that they were they were part of the first made in Ghana doctors, medical mm. doctors, 1969 year group. Okay. Yes. So and you you, you I mean you, you you feel it. Worthy of celebration. Yeah, they are, they are, yeah, they are, they are colleagues were there to help with uh, with the celebrations, and the best man for the occasion was there 50 years ago. Okay. Uh, Professor Ian Wood. 
Really? Yes. That's beautiful. Yes. And then the, 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 the maid servant, uh, what do you call? Uh, bride. Maid of honor, you mean? Maid of honor. Okay. The, okay. the bride maid. Yeah. Was also there. I see. One of the flower girls was there. Okay. <laughs> a lot of memories there. Yes. Yeah. Wow. And, and President Kupo came was along. Was there as well. Yes, okay. he was there. Okay. And then um, the vice president. I see. Uh, and it was, and, it was and a and celebration. The wife. Yes. And the, yeah. the first lady of the land, um, Mame Rebecca Kufuado, represented well. herself and the president. Okay. So okay. it was Beautiful. a memorable occasion. That's nice to know. Yes. And there was a lot to learn from them. God I bless mean. them. Yes. But yes. Away, away from the beauty, uh, there's something that's trying to mar the beauty of education in the country. Mm -hmm. And it's the incessant threats and strike uh, by our teachers union. So we have all three of them. So Nagrat, Nat, and Coalition of Consent Teachers. And they all have embarked on a strike for arrears that have not been paid since 2012. Even be before we go to what GES has issued, um, let's talk about the state of education in the country because I do understand that when it comes to the MPP, education is at the top of the list. Every single day we're talking about free SHS, we're talking about getting as many children educated, um, you know, all parts of, you know, uh, plans to get as many people educated, like I said. And so what's the problem and why are we having our teachers going on strike yet again? Um... <clears throat> It's, it's very, very interesting uh, to say that teachers, I mean, you cannot toy with them. Yeah. We are here because of a teacher mm -hmm. or teachers. And they are kind of services that they provide to society. Uh, it's quite immeasurable. You cannot uh, uh, ever pay for. It's a very, very <laughs> tedious job. Yeah. Uh, divinely and rewarding as we, as we used to say however we are in the same uh, economy we are in the same system mm -hmm. so uh, what the bank manager is earning what the journalist is earning yeah. the lawyer the medical doctor nurse whoever uh, is earning uh, must somehow be commensurate to what the teacher uh, to must have. Okay. So it becomes a very difficult situation when uh, teachers has to complain about their salaries, I mean, mm -hmm. the, 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 the basics and all those things. And it becomes more painful when uh, it builds up in areas. Yeah. Uh, so I do sympathize with them. Mm -hmm. I am with them. Uh, however, uh, it is also important to note that. Um, we are in a situation where we have limited resources at all material times. Yeah. And so that's why we have uh, budget estimates and all kinds of things to meet our needs mm -hmm. as a nation. Um, the timing of the strike action yeah. is what uh, uh, somehow makes it uh, difficult to uh, fully go on with them. Okay. We do know, and I do know, that there have been some kind of negotiations with government sector and all that. Mm -hmm. And for the teachers to all of a sudden jump onto uh, uh, at this the point, strike. I mean, the strike action, yeah. the, the last option that we do expect mm -hmm. that uh, they, they would take, is, is quite disturbing. But they said the negotiations proved futile, and that's why they decided to embark on the strike. They gave a deadline of December 5th. And nothing was done about it? No, it is not about nothing was done. You read the newspaper. Mm -hmm. Ghana Education Service, I mean, the, 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 the major stakeholder in all these, has also stated their she case and yeah. their issues. And you should not gloss over that these uh, areas they're talking about mm -hmm. uh, just happened overnight. Uh, overnight. Yeah. I mean, something that has accumulated since 2012. Yeah. It has survived. Um, uh, a whole regime, mm -hmm. a whole term, you know, four years, yeah. 2012 to 2016, was a whole term, a yeah. whole regime. And we did not see any such major uh, actions on Action the part taken. of the teachers mm. that, I mean, taken okay. in the quest of getting their monies, I mean, what is due to them. Mm -hmm. But so what has happened that at this material point in time, that the government uh, is in there and ready to negotiate and has been negotiating with them. Then they decide 
to I learned the, the, the kids are writing exams. Today. They're today. starting today, yes. And, and that is that is very disheartening. As much as we sympathize with the teachers, we also have our future leaders, our kids out there. Mm -hmm. So we need to balance the equation. Which is why we should have sorted out the teachers by now. You see, <clears throat> we are talking about <laughs> a depth, I, I mean, areas that have been built up yeah. over the years. And one would not know whether those who are make, seeking the claims or making the claims mm -hmm. or are legitimate or whatever. Yeah. So the, the, there was the need for some kind of clarity. I mean, verifications and all that. And Ghana Education Service have uh, stated clearly that they even they, they, they have uncovered some anomalies. Mm -hmm. Most people or some people who might have gotten it already are still, are in, still the, in the list. Yes. So it, it is prudent enough that um, Ghana Education Service, uh, that's what it's doing, so that we can, we can avoid where repetitive uh, payments are, are made mm. uh, illegally yeah. to some people. I get you. You, you get the point. Yeah. So why can't we give ourselves time? Fifth, fifth December ultimatum, knowing very well that uh, examination is coming on on the, uh, on, on the ensuing uh, uh, working day, which mm. is Monday. It's, it's quite unfair. I think they decided to bite where it would hurt the most, just so that we understand how serious the situation is. Because maybe we're thinking of the children and the exams and the education, yeah. but what about them? How much are they even earning in the first place? Mm -hmm. You know, for them to have these number of arrears sitting and waiting, and now they have to pay bills, we have increments in bills yes, and all yes, of that. Yes, of course. You know? Yes, of course. I, I do, I've, I've said earlier on that we, I do sympathize. Yeah. That, that is a fact. Mm -hmm. Everybody agrees. And they will tell you, they will t my, my colleague will tell you that uh, uh, governance is continuing. Yeah. You will inherit uh, 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 liabilities and assets. So, yes, I do agree. But then that is where the pain comes. Yeah. It becomes a burden on the day's government. So, in, in retarding such uh, uh, areas, in retarding such debt burden, you, you need time. To how run much, things. How about. much more time do we need? But but so are we saying that uh, they, they, they should continue with the strike action and jeopardize the future of our kids? Are we saying that they should continue working without salary? No, it is not about salaries. Mm -hmm. It the is salary not. Arrears. It is not about. It should be clear. Mm -hmm. See, ever since this government took office, 2017, it owes no teacher any salary arrears. It does not. It doesn't? No, since 2017. Okay. It does not. What we are talking about had been in, in, in existence since 2012 and accumulated up to 2016. So what, are you shifting the blame on the other party for being, um, you know, unable to pay? And so then the MPP government should not carry that burden? Is that no, what you're saying? No, no. Okay. Yeah, there, there, there are two aspects. Yes, you can blame them. Okay. For, for uh, a certain aloof and getting the, the, the arrears piled up. Yes, mm. they are blamable. And who else? Okay. We, we cannot blame you. You cannot blame me. Mm. Now, it is also not that NPP government should, uh, should not take up the burden. Okay. No, I told you. Yeah. Uh, um, uh, governance is continuing. Yeah. So, we've inherited that legacy debt, just as many other I legacy guess, debts. Yeah. But the negotiations, how to retarded, when to pay it, it's hot, it's brewing trouble and confusion okay. somehow. So I will urge Ghana Education Service that they should speed up whatever procedures and whatever uh, decisions they have to take. So government will be able to know who to pay and how much to pay. All right. Then they, 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 they should have a roadmap when to pay and all that. Mm -hmm. And then I will urge the teachers. In, in, in the supreme interest of the nation, for the sake of our kids, they should go back to the classroom whilst they, they, they engage uh, the uh, uh, stakeholders in negotiations. Okay. And we, the citizenry, we, we must also uh, come along and then help them. All right. To, to get these things. Let me bring lawyer, lawyer Guzzi in because clearly the blame is being put on the NDC government for their failure to pay some of these arrears. Um, you know, that has led us to the strike action now. What were the challenges and why was the NDC unable to pay these areas before going out of power? Okay. 
thank you very much. Uh, I mean, before I even um, go there, I think that um, we need to credit the teachers of this country mm. and give them um, a certain kind of um, position within what we are today. And like my senior Riley pointed out, we are what we are because of the efforts of these teachers. Mm -hmm. And so on any day, anything that had to do with teachers, we need to be a bit more, build a certain consensus yes. on yeah. matters involving teachers, particularly matters involving their welfare. Mm -hmm. The risk associated with being a teacher, recently I read, as to how in a, a village in the Ashanti region, teachers were assaulted mm. and beaten. Oh. Interestingly enough, teachers do not have what you call risk allowance, like their fellow police yeah, officers yeah. and others. But the work comes with a lot of risk, mm -hmm. oh. a lot of associated risk. And so I believe that if there is a need for us to get them paid, they ought to be paid. All right. okay. Now, I have read the statement from the ministry mm -hmm. I have also read a statement from GES and the response from, um, uh, what shall I say, um, the coalition, the various yeah. coalition yeah. of teachers. Yeah. I think that this particular problem has come about, especially the strike, mm -hmm. not because the teachers do not think maybe the allowances will not be paid. The greater concern for me is the immaturity, excuse my language, mm -hmm that the Minister of Education has taken this whole matter. Regrettably, and I will explain. That, okay. I will explain. You see, when teachers first issued a statement, they gave a certain ultimate mm -hmm. and said, look, we are giving government this number of days. Already there have been promises and failures. Failures, yes. And so we are giving you up to this time. Only for the Minister of Education to go on a sempa to now accuse the leadership of the teacher unions that this intended strike action is as a result of the NDC telling them to go on strike. Did you tell them to go on strike? How can we do that? Okay. We are talking about teacher unions made up of almost over 200,000 people. Mm -hmm. The are MPP people there, the are NDC. So, how can NDC go and tell them, go on strike? Maybe to stir the waters a bit. Then no. it's that picture and that so, the MPP so, is not taking no. care of the teachers. So you see, when the teacher brings issues about his welfare up, mm. and the response from the minister, the sector minister, mm. is not one that should demonstrate cool heads, but yeah. to say that their intended strike action is politically motivated. Once you do that, you breach every question on good faith. Mm -hmm. So it is the posturing of the Minister of Education that has brought us to this point. You think so? Yes. Look, what is the point? If today, even in this uh, you know, entity, workers say, no, we have legitimate concern. And government actually acknowledges that, yes, there are legitimate claims, mm -hmm. except to say that they want to vet those claims to ensure that there are no illegal payment. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. It makes sense. And say, look, let's sit down and dialogue. Which now, is probably something that they, they mentioned maybe in, in their interactions. And so no, that's no, why no. they're saying you, they're shocked. That is why they are saying that in all of this, they have given government a lot of opportunity. They have been promises. They have been failures. Mm -hmm. And so even with this, they, they don't just say we are going on strike. Mm -hmm. They gave government what you call more or less a time period. Yeah. That get us on board. Let's have conversation. The only conversation from the minister. And you see, he is the president's representative in the educational sector. When your, your, your workmen have an issue, and the only response to them is that they are doing that out of political motivation, already you undermine every basis for them to engage you constructively. So if we are here today, it should be blamed squarely at the education minister. Why him? Should, I mean, you uh, were in power no, 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 for no, no, how many years? No, no, Why I'm didn't coming. you the issue, the issue? No, the issue is really not about the payment or not. Okay. I am talking about, you see, we are humans. Mm -hmm. How you deal with people, oftentimes tell them, okay, we can even defer because we have seen good faith from government. 
so we can defer the strike action, engage further. Is that what used to happen when you that were in power? That has always and been. That's why that has here. always been. But and I mean, that, and, and listen, my people lady, get tired my lady, after a while. You see, that's the point I'm making that, listen, if the minister had not come out with this, I mean, obviously, immaturity relative to what he told them will not be here. Are you assuming that that's the reason why or no, you no, have no, facts no, 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 to but you see, indicate? No, but I'm saying that if today you here in TV3, mm -hmm. you give your management, okay, media general, and say, look, within this week we'll do that. And your management comes and says, look, what you are about doing is politically motivated. Mm -hmm. If they call you to come and sit down, would you agree? Obviously, they have poisoned the atmosphere. Okay. So I'm saying that but for that untidy comment from the Minister of Education, and you see, this is our Minister of Education, regrettably, regrettably, whenever there are national issues, he either comes to muddy the waters, poison the atmosphere with a high level of immaturity. Look, you recall, when students had to, you know, go out there for their placement, yeah. and that placement issue came, mm -hmm. we watched on live television, footages even from TV3 mm. and other stations. As a minister of education, one will require a certain level of decorum. Mm -hmm. What was his response? Yeah. That those students, their parents, they have been they paid have been to, come and speak. to come and do that. I mean, I, I cannot for a minute say that kids that were struggling were running just for placement will stage that process. How much at all can you give a child to stage that thing? And so it is about our Minister of Education knowing that, look, there's something called servant leadership, mm -hmm. where you recognize that one power is transient. Today you are minister, tomorrow yeah. you are not. Yeah. Also recognize it, that you are exercising that power for and on behalf of the people of this country. Mm -hmm. Any time you want to spew those language, those untidy words, I will beg Minister Napo to always go back, reflect, think twice, and possibly put water in his mouth. Calm down, a cooling time before he spewed those words. Like, you see, I still want look, to find look, out, even look, before Anabu comes look. in, I want to find out, so what were the challenges? Why were you not able to uh, resolve this beautiful, issue when you were in beautiful, power? Beautiful, beautiful. You see, when this matter came under our administration, what we did was to face, do the payment in phases. Mm -hmm. And like my senior pointed out, you cannot expect that within a tenor, a certain amount of money will be paid. And yeah. that is why in all of this, I have always maintained that what is required is a, a level of constructive engagement. Okay. And if you listen to the teacher union, they say, look, from 2017, we gave you time. Mm -hmm. You gave us a promise. 2018, we gave you that time. 2019, and you see, I think why the teachers are getting a bit impatient mm -hmm. is that, you see, we have had the benefit of seeing the 2020 budget. Yeah. All the estimates are already in the budget. In the budget, exactly. And the estimates have been approved by government of Ghana. So whether or not government had made budgetary allocation, because you see, if government had not made any budgetary allocation for a certain expenditure item, there is no way to be paid. Mm -hmm. Unless, of course, government decide to go outside the budget. Okay. Now, the point is that they have seen the budget estimate. So that is why they are getting impatient, because they know the volume of resources that had been earmarked for the educational sector. You have the opportunity to include that in your budget as well, and we are still here at this point. Let, exactly let, yeah. my point. But you see, at that time, our friends in the MPP actually made a lot of political capital out of those areas. And in fact, Nanado Dankwe Kufado did a program at Atraco, mm -hmm. the teacher first. In that program, he took steps and criticized the NDC administration and raised the hope of the various teacher unions. And that is why they are asking him to redeem those campaign promises. It does not lie in his mouth at this point. 
to say that, okay, it's a rest from no, the NDC. Yes, I'm and letting so you this. come in. Let, I let mean, me it's let, unfair. Let me let Honorable And, and, and our and, education and, and minister, yeah, he yeah, needs yeah, to What do you think about the at accusations? Yeah, yes, against. yes, but it's, it's very unfortunate uh, this morning. You asked a very important question mm. that our uh, uh, viewers and listeners would love to have a very uh, good answer to. Mm -hmm. My colleague decided not to do that, yeah. do the answers to that, but rather descend on the innocent uh, Minister of Education. And for a moment, I thought we were going to stop him. Yeah. I counted not less than five times of using the word immaturity, immaturity. And I take, I take it. Uh, but but he, he apologized uh, no, indirectly. No, 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 no. I'm coming. No. Okay. And no. I take it for a pinch of salt. Okay. Hmm. Sitting here and then a colleague insulting without any provocation, insulting the, the sector minister without any provocation. And I expected you, the host, mm. to at least... Um, uh, Which uh, is why I kept taking him back to that main question of how they you, were not able to... It is to still not this. too late. You mm. can ask him to retract those words and no apologize problem. to the minister. Okay. So we, we move on. It's very unfortunate. Lawyer, I mean, you, how can you do that? Are you going to apologize to the minister for... Shall I, shall I respond? And then, yes. and then you let say... Him, let him finish. Then. And no, then you, you want, say, you, you come and then spew out those words. Please, these can are... I, can I, these can are, I, these are let, insulting let words. Can I, can I these respond? are, let these are insulting words and it cannot be tolerated and should not be tolerated. Can I, can I, we can are I, dealing I, with an issue here. Yeah. You asked a question. Why are we here that the teachers are on strike? Mm -hmm. From 2012 to 2016, it was the policy of Mohammed's government, the NDC government, yeah. that all areas, they were going to pay only three months mm. for public service. Yeah, and the, the rest they had to justify yes. why. Yeah. And then they decided not to pay. They paid for only three months mm. public service, including these teachers. And none of them at that time, these groupings, they did not raise a finger. On the government, they did not go on strike or demonstrations in demanding uh, what uh, was due them. Mm -hmm. Until 2016, they existed. Now it was total about almost 12,000 or so of them. Yeah. According to GES, about 95 percent have been paid. 95 percent of those affected have been paid. It's actually those 120,000. Uh, 120,000, yeah. yeah. and 95 percent. Of, of those uh, affected have been paid by this government, the Kufado's government, mm. since 2017 coming. So, yes, he promised that he would do. And he comes to office, and 95% payments have been affected. Okay. The rest, GEA is saying it has detected some kind of uh, anomaly. So we need to vet mm -hmm. and then verify so we can keep the public purse not wasted on uh, illegal, illegal payments. Mm -hmm. That is all that, and they need time to do that. As far back as 2nd December, there was a meeting between the stakeholders, and it was agreed that they would speed up with the process of vetting. So, so by the time we get to the Christmas break, all those that are properly due yeah, will, will be, be paid. paid. That has been the agreement. Mm -hmm. Then they went on with these threats and then the strike. Yeah. And you are saying that the minister had said that uh, they, they are being uh, uh, pushed up by, by uh, uh, NDC, political, political. Yeah. You, you, did, you did worse than that when you were in government. So do you agree? Please, please, you please, agree please, that please, politically please, 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 then you can please. come in. When you were speaking, you, you, he didn't. You, no, 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 no. You, did, you did worse, 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 worse more than that mm. when you were in government. Every single thing, you blame it on NPP. Even when uh, 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 the clergy want to come up with a, uh, uh, a national issue, comment on it, you blamed it on ND, uh, NPP. You did all that. And nobody insulted any of you for even saying, granted that the minister have even said so, or have said so. Mm -hmm. It does not uh, 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 warrant you the right to insult him Senior, can I in come public. In? No, you let me finish. Uh, you are coming in and I expect you to apologize. The, the gentleman, as I know, you mm -hmm. know, and revere. Okay. Both of us, I mean, our profession uh, is one of not so much of gentility, but so much of decorum. Decorum, yes. Yes. We, we uphold mutual okay. respect for one another. All right. So we must have it clear and clear that Ekufuado's government, as we speak, not owe 
any arrears to any teachers. It inherited those arrears from, from 2012 okay. up to 2016. Mm -hmm. And even that, 95% of those 120,000 people, you can do a calculation for me. If you are talking about 120,000 mm -hmm. and 95% have been have cleared. Been yeah. Left with about 5%. Yeah. So a lot of commitment has been shown. A lot of goodwill has been shown. And instead of applauding the president and the government for taking these steps, we rather go up there, muddle the waters, and come downstream and complain and ask who, who, who so muddle the waters. That is exactly what NDC in opposition do with. And it's helping nobody. Mm -hmm. As much as we do sympathize with our colleagues, uh, uh, I mean, our friends, our brothers and sisters, teachers are no, uh, I mean, they are no strangers. They are all one of us. And we would love to see them also flourish and also uh, 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 live good, their yeah. welfare. But this one, it is far below the belt. I mean, we, 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 sh we, we, sh we, should, we should all tell them to go back to the classroom back. Okay. whilst negotiations continue. All right. And I'm, I'm so much optimistic that yeah. before Christmas break, all those that are due to be paid, Will surely be paid. Definitely. If 95% have been <coughs> already see, paid. Lawyer, you hold on. Let me just read out the anomalies that the GES cited so we can continue. So it says that close examination of the data indicated the following anomalies. One, some of the personnel were to be paid on undeserved ranks. Now, some of the names had no personnel records on the GS payroll from 2012 to 2014 to establish that they could be owed salary arrears over mm. that period. And the third one says some of the listed personnel were not owed any salary arrears and yet had been credited with huge sums of money and in some cases up to 58,000 Ghana CDs. Question here is how are we going to retrieve all this money? Now for some female personnel were to be paid night watchmen allowances when they had never been night watchmen within the GES. And finally, some staff who were owed about six months had been credited for only two months. And so on the basis of these, management directed that the data should be audited to verify the genuineness of the payments in order to ensure that only deserving staff are paid the right amount of money due them. And the unions were duly informed of this development. First see, of all, I number one to you to you see, you see if, if, you know, if you know my person, mm -hmm. I am the type that is very careful, even with my choice of words. Okay. I am saying that the minister has demonstrated a certain pattern. He has attained a certain dubious distinction. When it comes to using very untidy words in his conversation with the very people he served. Mm -hmm. Our Minister of Education is not a king. He is a servant of the people of this country. So when kids go through a certain experience and the only comment from the minister is to suggest directly that those kids have been paid, bust, my lady, what other word can you describe that conduct than immaturity? I've not insulted him. I am saying, look, this morning, my very senior, very but, learned. But, but it's no, the just word a minute. You use no, that just a minute. Him. Just a minute. Okay. My senior here this morning, he explained what has brought these arrears. Any teacher listening to him will say that, look, this is a man who wants us to get to the table mm -hmm. to engage constructively to resolve this problem. That is how he had spoken. Have I described his comments as immature? No, I will not do that. Okay. But you see, where a minister comes out, one of the largest you know, trade unions in this country, with over 200,000 members, mm -hmm. they have taken a position. A matter that affects the children of this country. And the ministers only respond to them. Mm -hmm. Is that they are doing that out of political motivation. Yeah. No, you say this one, I should give But it's you... the use of the word that he No, thinks... but that's immature. Could you, could you not have used another word okay, instead of okay. using so that for instance, particular one? For instance, I could have... To maybe... make it less insulting. No, okay. I, you know, like I told you, mm -hmm. I have done this with a, a, a certain level of hesitation. Because, you see, I've tried to find a more appropriate way to describe his conduct. But the pattern is consistent. 
My senior here is not on this platform disputing, except to say, oh, the NDC in the past uh, uh, accused people and did that and did that. If the NDC did that in the past, for which reason you told the good people of this country that they should vote for you, mm -hmm. we expect better leadership from you. Okay? And, and, and our minister of education, I am saying that he has a pattern of saying oh, he abuses Ghanaian, he abuses his predecessor, he abuses everybody. So I'm saying that if this pattern is not immaturity, all I'm encouraging him is that he holds a very sensitive position in this government, Minister of Education. I would rather beg him that in engaging with the people who gave Nanado Dankwe Kufado the mandate, mm -hmm. he must have a certain level of decorum when he's engaging us. So Look, you don't find anything wrong with what you said? No, then? I mean, that's his conduct. That's his conduct. Look, would I you am have been offended if another... No, if I know. conduct myself in that form, you should be able to tell me that Godwin... This particular thing you said is immature. But that's what he's saying, that even if that's the case, mm -hmm. we could have used a better way of addressing it instead of going straight Can on Can you suggest saying, one to me, my Well, he could have said that was wrong on his part to have spoken in such a manner, and that's why he so wanted I, to take okay, that word back. Okay, so then so I'll replace kind of the immaturity with lack of leadership. Lack of leadership? Yes, he had not demonstrated leadership. Okay. Leading a workforce over 200,000, it is expected that when he speaks, there will be salt in his words, okay, so that the people he leads, he can carry them along. That's the whole question of leadership. Anna, but and, is that and, okay? And, and, and you see, how can that be lack okay? of leadership. How can, how can that be okay? Oh. Hmm. You, you, you insult um, a minister of state, not, not by saying he's a minister. You, you insult somebody in public, on television, and... No, no, you, no, I mean, I mean I'm okay, coming. so would, I'm it have, would it have been different if I said the minister had demonstrated incompetence. Of course, well, that, you, you, you can talk, you can okay. say whatever you okay, want. Okay, so I'll replace the immaturity no. with incompetence. Is that okay? Can I apologize on his behalf so we move on? Because we still have not no, touched no, no. on the no, way no, forward. You see, you see uh, I, I will basically prefer maybe replacing the immaturity with incompetence. Okay. But you, for you to apologize on my behalf, I want to issue because a disclaimer. I want, okay. I want to be very clear that the minister's conduct is not good enough for that position. But he must... But, look, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. He, he, no, please, please, he please, here, please, you please, see the please, please, the, the please. Oh, when, look, when look, we have you see, the see that? I gave you the... I gave you on, the let, let him just land and I'll give you that opportunity. When, when we have the opportunity to be on set like this, it does not suggest that we have all that it takes. You understand? It's just a privilege. I mean, anybody else can have the opportunity. So when you are addressing one, an one another, and the person do not have the opportunity to clear herself or himself at that material moment, that's why you, be, you should be circumspect. Okay. The way you want to uh, address uh, a, a person. You take away the issue. You ask a very, a very uh, um, uh, unharmful question. And instead of addressing the question, the issue, he rather decided to descend on the minister. Anyway, okay. anyway, viewers are maybe, there. Maybe, maybe, anyway, maybe, anyway, maybe, viewers, maybe next viewers time I'll say, when he, described, the best when he described the intention mm -hmm. by viewers the, are the, the, best the, 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 the teachers of this country, the hardworking teachers of this country to embark you on You knew please, they were hardworking please, please, and you to refused embark, to pay them to embark, for four to, years. To Which is what it's I was not true. It's years. not true. You, this arrest, this arrest, this this arrest is from 2016. This arrest, I've confirmed with teachers, and it's from 2016. No, no, no. Oh, teachers oh, are please, saying please, it's from 2012. Please, please, please. I've confirmed from teachers. No, I'll show you so the test. Can you teach us? Because then no, 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 I'll show you the test. Exactly. Oh, please. Because the statement out there says that from 2012 to 2016. No, I was. I'll give you. I'll give you. I'll give you. In fact, what happened was that. What happened was that. What happened was that. All around. There was the need you to pay, this problem. and so the teachers and government agreed. That teachers used, and government did not agree. It was a senior. government policy. Three that months, said you pay three, months, three months, three months, mm. of all three months of their salary. It was a policy it was, it that didn't agree. It was a policy that was the teachers. What, what no, the please, point is that don't infuriate the teachers more. Okay. Because would the you, teachers you never listen? sat down with your government. Would you want to, to listen? say three months? Uh, pay us only listen? three months. When you pay so much, when you pay three months, three years now, you have not said. Who the three that? months agreed. 
you don't want to comply with it. In Who said so? Who said so? We've done no. We've you paid 95% of listen that. To me. If you do not want to comply, we've shown commitment here. You President Kufuado has shown commitment and he has redeemed his pledge Would you to listen? the teachers. Would you listen? I won't listen because you don't want to listen to the truth. The simple truth is that the commitment that uh, President Akufuadu made to teachers have been redeemed 95 percent. It is not okay, five percent. The five percent are the ones who are now agitated. Exactly. They have an anomalies. How are we going to retrieve monies from people that have been paid? That's wrongly? the point. What are we doing? How much time no, are we point? going to give? What's the point? Well, well I'm, I'm just but saying, see, based on anomalies. See, so see, what's the way see, forward now? How much time are we giving? What is even key is that I have confirmed from teachers who tell me that listen, over a year now. Mm -hmm. Their responsibility allowances, yeah. their promotional allowances have all not been paid over a year now. So there are real issues within the sector. Mm -hmm. And that is why I'm saying that when you have a minister entrusted with a workforce over 200,000, mm -hmm. there's a certain level of responsibility that is required from his public engagement. Okay. You understand? And that is why I'm saying that his comment that the teachers of this country, their decision. Their intention to embark on the strike action is politically motivated. It's completely irresponsible. Okay. I would insist on that word. He had been very irresponsible. We expect something better from our So what is education. the way forward? Because the way now forward is that as we speak, our kids, our brothers, are supposed to be in school writing their exams. Their teachers have decided to place whatever it is down. Mm -hmm. Why should we come to this position? Minister, I will beg of you immediately retract the use of the word that their strike is politically motivated. Call them to sit on the table. If possible, Mr. President, get involved so that we can resolve this problem immediately. Mm. Because you see, I've spoken to teachers who tell you that, listen, this morning they've woken up. They had to use structural. Mm. Transport fares have been increased. Yeah. The cost of living every day under this incompetent Akufuado administration, is going high. It is no true fault of theirs if they are asking for more. Having regards to the fact that if you look at the budgetary allocation, that goes to the presidency alone. The teachers are saying it. Mm -hmm. The 120-something ministers mm -hmm. and what have you. Teachers are saying it. Look, if a government lives modestly and they tell citizens, come along with us, the citizens know that, oh, this government is living a very modest life. Mm -hmm. So they are willing to make concessions. But they are seeing a government living in so much opulence. The okay. numbers are increasing every day. The burden on the taxpayers is increasing every day. You think if you ask them to sit on the table and make concessions, leave some of their claims to you, they will do that. No, because you are not willing to even go along with them. These are the real issues. Now, now, speaking of this, I mean, fuel prices have gone up by 1%. Some people may say that's very small, but even that is still an increment. And COPEC is still insisting that governments need to take off the nuisance taxes uh, that have been placed on um, fuel in the country. Yet nothing is happening. They're warning that there could be some more increments before the end of the year. Why are we still struggling with fuel increase? Well, that has always been an external pressure mm. as a major factor. It, has, and it, it is known to all of us. Um, and then also, uh, when you have the, the uh, you know, this is all about business. Mm -hmm. These are private entities bringing the goods in. And they, 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 will, they want to realize their uh, profits and everything on their investments. Okay. You understand. Mm. So um, it is very little that you could do to restrain it. Unless, of course, we decide to... Uh, Deregulate. So long as, uh, I, I mean, unless we, we decide to regulate. Regulate it, yes, okay. The deregulation policy has come to stay with us. So there's and nothing we can do about yes, that? Yes, of course. Uh, COPEG is making a suggestion mm -hmm. that some of the taxes on it should be taken should off. Should be taken off. Yeah. Well, that is a matter for consideration mm -hmm. uh, with the economic But this they've been talking uh, about for a number of months. Yes, I remember but, when fuel prices increased uh, sometime towards the middle of the year or so. Yeah. This conversation yeah. came up. Yeah, so it keeps on coming, and that is the essence of uh, dialoguing okay. and negotiations. You understand? Okay. Yes. So it is. It is. It is not out of place for uh, consumers to 
uh, express that, that kind of uh, suggestions and all that. Mm -hmm. So then it should not also be taken that uh, because fuel prices are going up, it, it, it is the doing of the government. Mm -hmm. We do all know the situation, uh, a world situation when it comes yeah, to fuel food. and pricing and all that. But, yes. but, is no longer government but you know there was an issue of fuel smuggling which is costing the country about 1.6 billion exactly. and that's one of the reasons why they're asking that we take off some of these taxes because these are some of the reasons why we're getting fuel increments. Um, and and, and uh, if, if there had been sm uh, smuggling, if there had been smuggling, mm -hmm. admittance of smuggling, yeah. then it means we as a citizen, we are, we are, we are our own enemies. Once we stop some of these practices, we can have a sanity, we can have sanity in the, in the industry mm -hmm. where we can have manageable fuel prices coming in. So, and so then we have to pay for the, the, the loss of taxes because then mm. people are evading taxes and smuggling fuel and that's why for some this, reason... This, this administration, the NPA, have done a great job in trying to uh, curtail or bring down that kind of anomaly down. But as usual, these crime, I mean, these crimes, mm -hmm. these uh, financial crimes and economic crimes uh, prevails. So it is incumbent on all of us to understand that whatever we're going through, whatever we do mm. as a people, it comes back to us. Okay. We bear the brunt. You, you understand? Okay. So uh, we must be ready to give up those people we do know. They are uncles, they are fathers, they are brothers and all that who do all kinds of smuggling and then stealing these monies from the people. And then the people uh, uh, are being asked to pay back mm. through their, their noses. Yeah. It's, it's, it's unfair, though. Mm -hmm. But to sit there and then try to blame government alone will not solve the problem. Okay. We must get to know where the real issues are, where the real problems are. But we already have stated where the problems are coming from. <laughs> yes, yes. So we must find solution to them. Okay. We stop what we are doing as individuals. Attitude now change. Um, um, yesterday, uh, the Archbishop for uh, Metropolitan Archbishop for, mm -hmm. uh, uh, I think, Takrade. Yes. Uh, when President visited them, their 70th anniversary, the, the, the Catholic Church, yeah. uh, they were doing they had an anniversary. President visited them. The, the, the Archbishop said, we need to change our attitude as people, mm -hmm. being drivers, being teachers, journalists, politicians, lawyers. We are all complacent of what the, the problems we're going through. Okay. So if we, for once we can be nationalistic and decide not to do things that are inimical to the economy and affect the people, mm. Uh, as we move on. Then we'll be seeing things go in. And I hope that government works on clamping down on the smugglers. It's important. My time is yeah, up. Loyalty. You're working on, kindly, we are working kind, on, you're working yes. on it. Kindly you know, have your last yeah, question. Just, so just quickly up. on this. It's regrettable that we have an administration that appears not be responsible for anything. Who says so? I mean, I mean even who fuel says? price. Yes. If you read the COPEX mm -hmm. statement, yes. they are saying that even by reviewing the tax components, yeah. mm -hmm. Fewer prices will go down. Is that not the responsibility of government? No, 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 no. But, but please, then, please, please, where senior, do you get the money? I gave you the benefit. To, where do you get the money that, to run I am the economy, saying that, the nation? I am saying that. And we in want the past, infrastructure. In the past, mm. these same people. We have it. We, these same people. We need when we brought ESLA, the Energy Sector Levies Act, mm -hmm. among other things, they describe it as nuisance taxes. Oh, and that with yes. the benefit of power. Place. They were going to scrap it. Mm -hmm. My lady, I put to you today that as we speak, mm -hmm. Esla alone mm -hmm. had given this administration six billion Ghana cities. Mm -hmm. Okay. But for the visionary leadership of John Mahama. Oh. Today, as we speak, so that's we have, the oh, please, please, please. We have <laughs> within the road fund, 20 persons going to road fund. That alone had yielded over 3.2 billion Ghana cities. Where are your facts? When you put ah, these figures there. Go and read. Your, your people, read where? That is what I'm read, saying. Your read people. Where? It would have been nice if you had this. Uh, yes, okay, read, so read, read it from where? See. As you go and read from where? You know. So, so As this you go, morning, you ask me to go and read morning, from where? So from the literature you, book? No, can I give you where you should? From a story book? At least give us, okay. Yes, give me. I say, give it out. Just pick Minister Ken of Oh, please. Under the Energy Sector Levis Act, he's supposed to apply to parliament Please. how much he had obtained from the levy. Uh -huh. okay. And he had so, presented the 2018, uh -huh. 2019 uh -huh. estimate to parliament. Uh -huh. okay. So and those so are in there. Please, please, no. those are right. in there. I've given you my thought. Two, 
I think so that I can conclude on yeah. this. The good people of this country, on the seventh day of December 2016, when they were voting for Nanado Dankwe Kufuado, when Ghanaians were voting, they were not voting for you when mm -hmm. to now Ghanians. come and provide explanation for fuel price increases. Yeah. They were not voting for you to do that what? with the benefit of power. When fuel price now increases, your solution to it will be attitudinal changes. Okay. Of course, it's, it's please, <laughs> attitudinal please. Change. There's no question yes, of everywhere. attitudinal change. Who says so? This current increase. Who says so? Do you but, know but she told this, I'm, I'm, please. She this, told you about one place. One minute. This current increase. Do you know? She this told thing? you. It's because the city is falling Absolutely. against the dollar. Is that not the direct incompetence oh, of this ah, administration? Okay. See? If you have stabilized the city. And the city is not depreciating at the level it is. But they said they, they've done better with the city than uh, your exactly. government exactly. ever did. Go exactly. Go and read Bloomberg. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Bloomberg report on the city. When? Pathetic. When? Oh, should I, I will share the link with you. Mm. Very pathetic. Look, there are real issues that... But, but, but we've managed the city see, more the good, than you, the good better people, than you. The good people of this but country. But she told you. This morning. She told you. Watching you. She the biggest you. concern is that Nanado Danko uh -huh. Kufado's Esmas give to them, uh -huh. as we speak this uh -huh. morning, it further increases in fuel prices. Oh, please. Okay. Please. All right. <laughs> On this note, we don't, we don't have that time. Is, uh, that is a good we have to go. We don't that's have time. I was trying that's to find the Bloomberg report. That is Esmas gift. The economy is far better managed. You don't understand what you are talking about. I was trying to find the, 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 the Bloomberg the report, but I can't. Share the link with me. If I have time, I'll be able to read it. The economy is far better managed. But thank you so much. Thank you so much, gentlemen. My time is up and we have to go. Yeah, okay. And so this is a plea to government, especially to the president concerning the teachers. It's important that they get back in the classroom. Yes. And so let's, let's we, do whatever we, are, we can. We, we to should ensure. be appealing to the teachers. Mm. At this point, the, 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 the appeal must go to the teachers. And not the government. We, well, the no, teachers go, are government, not happy with how government, government is Government is working. Issue. Government says by, by the closure of uh, uh, the Christmas break, all those who are due to be paid would have been be paid. paid. Yes. Okay. So, so then we are appealing to teachers. Okay. Uh, I mean, you can go ahead. And yes, I'm, appeal, I'm appealing to teachers that with the, with the, with the strongest uh, 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 national interest that you, you've always portrayed, you've shown that, you taught all of us to be where we are today. We do appreciate you. For this one, please go back to the classroom for the sake of our kids, our future leaders, as we always say. Government will do whatever it is within its power to meet you uh, okay. uh, appropriately. Okay. Uh, let, let us, let us show some you kind know, of patience here yeah. and go back to the classroom. All right. Yeah. All right. And just quickly, so uh, the Bloomberg report that he showed to me right now. So he said that Ghana City is headed for its 25th straight year of depreciation mm -hmm. against the dollar as the government's fiscal challenges erode investor confidence so, in the so currency I of the never, world's second biggest uh, cocoa many years? producer. Uh, this was posted December 5th, no. yeah, 25th. Decline or decline yeah, or depreciation. Oh, this was oh, posted on fifth no, 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 no. Fifth December twenty nineteen. It says twenty five years. 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 Well, it says twenty okay. fifth straight ah. year of depreciation. It's not so, it's not anyway, but look, our time is up. We have to go. If we have time later, on, we'll talk about it. But I've been speaking to Honorable Dr. Henry Kwabna Kokofu Esquire. He's a former MP for Bantama and also Deputy CEO Ghana Integrated Iron and Steel Development Corporation and member of the MPP National Communication. Committee, and also I've had Honorable Godwin Eguti Kujo Tamaklo. He's a legal practitioner and a member of the NDC Communications team. And so, thank you so much, gentlemen. It's been thank a pleasure. You. And uh, if you send messages, we'll see if we can have time to read them much <laughs> later on.